Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first edition of The Patch Report. I am your host, Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative and our Chief Patch Wrangler. Uh, the Patch Report is going to be a quick look in at the latest in security patches and updates, hopefully at least once a month for Patch Tuesday and whenever needed if something really interesting comes out. Uh, since this is a YouTube video, I am uh, legally obligated to say please like and subscribe if you do enjoy this sort of content. This is something new for us, so definitely please let us know if you'd like to see more of it. But with that, let's go ahead and look at the updates as they came out. So starting with the Adobe updates for September, they released 63 CVEs in seven different products. Most interestingly, probably is going to be the update for InDesign. It had 18 updates. Uh, the Photoshop one also fixed 10 CVEs. So none of these are under active attack or publicly known prior to the release. Uh, they're all a deployment priority of three, so nothing too earth shattering here, but definitely some really nice bugs. Also, thanks to ZDI researcher Matt Powell, he was able to uh, discover 42 out of the 63 bugs. So good on you, Matt. Um, keep it up. We'll see you next month. We don't always talk about Apple patches, but Apple patched uh, on Monday. So definitely take a look at that because they had two bugs that were under active attack, including one bug that is a kernel bug resulting from bounds checking problems. And this is impacting iOS, iPadOS, Mac OS, Big Sur, and Monterey. So pretty much the whole gamut of everything is impacting by this. Now what's really interesting is the iOS 16 advisory calls out the CVE, but doesn't say that it's under active exploit where it does on the other ones. So I don't know what to make of that, but pretty interesting. Uh, Big Sur also has another bug that's under active exploit as well. Again, in the kernel, this one is an out of bounds right. So it is time to update your Apple devices. If you got an iPhone, an iPad, or a Mac, get on the updates. Moving into Microsoft, we've got a very small release for Microsoft, although that's really not unusual for September. Septembers tend to be a little bit more on the quiet side. They've got 64 new patches in uh, a lot, quite a bit of their products, including <clears throat> an additional 15 CVEs in Edge that they've consumed from Chromium. So one other third party from ARM processors, so total of 60, 79 CVs, sorry, 79. And five of these CVs were submitted through the uh, ZDI program. Now of most important, of course, in this release is the one that's under active attack. So we had an active exploit in Apple. We've got one now in Windows 2 on the common log file system driver, otherwise known as CLFS. Now this is an elevation of privilege bug which means that someone is going to need to log in to a system or someone authenticated is going to run specifically crafted code. The way this usually works is you convince a user to open a file or some other thing that is going to trigger this vulnerability, executing code at elevated privileges, which they then use to take over the whole system. So like I said, this is under active exploit and Microsoft uh, credits four different agencies for reporting this bug. So that means it's likely beyond just targeted attacks. It's likely several people, if several people are seeing it in the wild, that's, uh, that's an indicator that it could be very widespread. Uh, the next bulletin I wanna talk about is a TCP IP remote code execution vulnerability, CVSS 9.8. So that's pretty serious. Uh, remote unauthenticated code execution with elevated privileges. Yikes, that adds up to wormable. Good news here is this is only impacting systems with IPv6 enabled and IPsec configured. So if you're running IPv6, and I know many of you are, you're probably running IPsec as well. So definitely test and deploy this update uh, quickly because it's a very serious vulnerability. Uh, not under active attack yet. I hope it doesn't get there because this one could definitely be uh, very, very impactful. Microsoft does, does give this their highest exploit index rating which means they anticipate exploits uh, within the next 30 days too. Now, another important severity bug that I think should be treated as critical is the Windows DNS server denial of service vulnerability. In this case, a remote unauthenticated attacker could shut down your DNS server uh, without any authentication whatsoever. So yikes, uh, without DNS, all your cloud resources are pretty much useless because there's no DNS pointing you to where they are. So definitely, uh, if you're running Microsoft DNS, test and deploy that one quickly as well. And of course, Google couldn't be left out of the zero day fun. I do want to point out a bug that was patched earlier this month in Chromium. Now it's being consumed by Edge. This is more of an in case you missed it bug than anything else. 
and uh, it it is being exploited in the wild. Again, this allows code execution by browsing to a specially crafted website. Has been fixed in Chrome and in down level uh, Chromium systems, but there's a lot of things that run Chromium. So not just Cro Edge, uh, we know smart speakers, televisions, cars, pretty much anything else that's running a web browser these days is running Chromium. So definitely make sure all the devices you have that are running it are getting patched. <clears throat> so those are the highlights. As you can see on the blog, we've got the table of everything else. The one uh, from ARM is publicly known, but it's not under active attack. It's a, a side channel speculation sort of cache thing. Interesting from an academic perspective, but I've never actually seen that in the wild. Do have a few other critical bugs to look at. A uh, couple of internet key exchange protocol bugs. Again, IPsec must be enabled. You've got the Microsoft Dynamics 365 on-prem. Uh, those are serious, but they require some user interaction, so that knocks them down a little bit. Moving through, you've got a lot of code execution bugs in this month, so definitely take your time, look at the table to see if there's any that are really standing out to you. I'll show you the ones that are standing out to me as we get down here, uh, then getting into the Chrome bugs that are being documented. There's that one that I mentioned is under active attack. Uh, moving on beyond just those, uh, I wanna mention the SharePoint bugs because there are some SharePoint bugs that stand out. Uh, and the reason they stand out is that Microsoft recently reported that SharePoint bugs were being used by Iranian threat actors in the wild. Uh, it, it, this bug is not one that's patched this month. It's actually a two year old bug, but the bugs this month, this month are very reminiscent of those bugs. So that's one of those things that's like, eh. Definitely take your time, look at those bugs, and if you're running SharePoint, please update it. Uh, the uh, attacks that Microsoft described took advantage of a two-year-old bug. So definitely patch your stuff. Moving beyond that, uh, there's some enterprise app management components that require authentication, but it's still kind of intriguing because uh, you would be able to install arbitrary system services that would then obviously run a system. Uh, I could definitely see this being used by attackers post-breach. So look at that one closely. There's almost 20 elevation of privilege bugs too to take a look at. A lot of those are just running special applications, specially crafted applications, like I already discussed, but some are relatively interesting. The info disclosure bugs mostly are just dumping memory in one form or another. There is one, however, that uh, impacts the data protection application programming interface. Not that that's a mouthful or anything, uh, but that allows you to encrypt data using it. And uh, this information disclosure bug would allow you to view the, the master key, which would then presumably allow you to decrypt a lot of the things that you've just encrypted. Definitely look at that. In addition to the DNS DOS, there's six other DOS vulnerabilities, probably most notably uh, in uh, Internet Key Exchange, there's one there, but there's also a DOS on HTTP However, this is only for newer systems that are running HTTP 3 with that enabled and are buffering I.O. Now that's a new feature in Windows Server 2022. So in this case, older is actually better. Uh, but if you're running Windows Server 2022 with HTTP 3, which if you are, you probably should be, uh, definitely take a look at that. Uh, finally, there is a security feature bypass in the network device enrollment service, but uh, they don't really give a lot of information of what that could be, just that an attacker could bypass the services cryptographic service provider. So that wraps it up for this month. The next Patch Tuesday will be on October 11th. And of course, we will be back on Patch Wednesday with another edition of the Patch Report. So please, if you like and subscribe, if you like this content and let us know, drop a comment below if you've got questions or there's additional things that you wanna see covered. As always, I'm Dustin Childs, your Chief Patch Wrangler here for the Zero Day Initiative. May all your reboots be smooth and clean.